they still have the kit, they still have the smoke. Maybe that's the best choice right now. Smoke the bomb and just run for it, but Saibu goes down in jungle, and now, I mean, now there's almost no chance. Even with the smoke, there's gonna be five blocks shooting through, RPK and shocks. The only ones that can try and bring it back, then they've landed two great headshots to start the retake with. The smoke, it actually goes quite far. I wonder if they're gonna be able to sit inside. Yeah, there's no, it's already way too open. And now PK, no chance at all. Frozen will take him down the third of the round for him and Mouseports start off with a pistol round win. Yeah, just a straight up firing squad from Vitality right at the end. And some miscues from the Mouseports, or I mean, excuse me, from, uh, from Mouseports, the firing squad. Some miscues from Vitality, a couple players going down before that retake could really begin. No one to have any kind of distraction, right? The smoke diffuse is one thing, but you need some players to be taking those fights so it's not just three or four Glocks firing into the smoke at random. One to nothing for the attacking side. MP5 brought now. out. That's, that's cool. Silenced, uh, silenced SMG. We don't get to see it nearly enough, I think. It's, um, it's a nice bit of, uh, bit of a change from the usual MP9s. So Frozen as well, once you said MP5, I was actually looking for Chris. I was too, I did, I, did, I did the same exact thing. It would have made sense, right? There was a while when a lot of people tried to join Chris on that MP7, and then it seems like they, they all went away from it. But he actually had a, a couple of games where he made it work a lot. He made it work as like an entry fragger. It was yeah. the weirdest thing. Stack towards the B bomb site for Vitality on defense. This is a cool little boost over. I don't know, I don't think it'll do a whole lot of damage. Why couldn't it have been a deagle up there? Listen, they're gonna get a chance to make this work. We'll see how effective it all is. Split towards the B bomb site, and they're, oh yeah, it's gonna do fine work. They don't even know where it's at. Tapping away, great shots from Apex. Those are nice long range picks. And they're still going for it. Oh no, this is a big mistake for Mouse Sports, isn't it? Only one person left, and that's Robs with the Galil. Still three people inside of it here. Alex thinking about just edging his way back. Can he stand up at the right time, showing his face, and Robs will find a third kill. He's still in trouble, though. If he gets dinked even once, this round is gonna be over, and there's the shot coming out. What a round from Vitality. We often see these stacks happening in, in all sorts of rounds, and they rarely do anything. Yeah, they had no idea where they were getting shot from. That's, that's beautiful work from Apex. He lands those shots just perfectly, ducks down. Once they start swinging, that's when he pops his head up. You like, uh, you enjoy the game of whack-a-mole. This was a pretty brutal one, Apex. What a champion. A reversal of fortune. Zai Wu's got an AWP already as well. Full investment for Mouse Sports in this second round. But they are facing down a gauntlet of such a strong defensive arsenal. That's gonna be great. The only problem was they only saved one AK. I guess that, that was a little bit of, a, of an annoyance. But not much, I guess. They, they're still gonna be fine. Would've been nice if they could've saved both uh, the rifles up there. Taking out Chris early on in this round, which will leave... Some deagles and a scout and some time for Mouse Sports to, to tinker with, with how to, to unfold this round. Well, it's gotta be a scout taking a pick, but again, it's going up against the AWP, so even if you hit the shot, it better be straight to the head, and obviously Zaiwu just so quick. Only one smoke, that's on Frozen, and I don't think it's gonna come out nearly enough to do enough work. Smoke and scout passed on to Woxic as they pass things on to their teammates. Shox waiting for his chance to pounce, and he's gonna spot the weapon, he's gonna finish it off. Two to one, a flawless round for Vitality. Yeah, well done early on here. You've got to appreciate that turnaround. And a basic lesson, I guess, from Saibu, just taking the first shot and then repositioning for the second fight, just constantly keeping them guessing, which is always, always important, right? Because you know the first guy that goes down is going to be calling in that information to the rest of the team saying he was in this position. And then if you change right. it even a little bit, um, actually, it's, it sort of becomes a bit counterproductive from uh, the attacking side. Now, fourth round going to be coming in here, and they still really don't have a lot. Grenades are going to be raining down on top, and that's just going to do a lot of damage. Might not want to overcommit to this fight in the middle if you're um, Apex up there. Doesn't seem like it's worth it. Vitality should have all the information. Those three players ran through underpass. Apex heard all the footsteps, so they have to be cautious about the boosts and, do, and towards window room. Apex sees nothing there. The boost is actually to try and pick someone off on catwalk, but with just Glocks, I can't imagine they do too much damage, although a great headshot, and he gets forced right back into Kerrigan. Apex left all alone, had nobody to help, nobody to support. Still a long way to go before this is going to feel doable for Mouse Sports. Man, that seems so silly. Why? Did, there was really no reason it felt like that Apex had to get caught there on his own. Could have probably just fallen back and would have been fine, but don't think he was expecting it. Now, four versus five as they try and make their way to the bomb site. That is a pretty good job on Alex. And he even is going to soften them up more. He just wants to take the fight. Quad kill here.
for the British player. And you like to see that. Some of the most exciting games from Vitality certainly are the ones where Alex is also contributing heavily on the kills, and he does that a lot. These were all unarmored targets, but still, good way to get him started in the game. And that's going to be the round for Vitality, and they, they bring it back quite nicely. Yeah, never able to get that M4 they salvaged into play. Kerrigan, I think, believe, I believe he was just watching Catwalk behind the team to try and help protect them to get up connector. And yeah, Apex has a nice cleanup on the second kill that Apex had done damage to. Some good support, some flashbang from Zai Wu. And here we are, three to one. The guns finally come back out for the mouse sports side. No AWP yet on the attack. But those two Kriegs, they can do work. Robson, Chris J to handle those, and Zai Wu with his off is gonna be in middle. Did he actually make the jump up? Because if he knows that they're not there, they threw all these smokes, three smokes in the middle, they just put out mouse sports to try and pretend that they were gonna go middle, and they're gonna go really fast towards the A-bomb side. Shocks with an early kill. And Alex with a big chance there. Oh, he almost got that kill on Robs. He was flashed for a long time. If he had, certainly that would have been the round, I think, for Vitality. But now, it's still up in the air. And Kerrigan with the AK, gonna be taking out Apex. That's not bad at all. Now, two versus three, and the bomb planted. It's looking good for mouse sports in this round. Um, th that fake in middle, I think Saiwoo might have had an idea because he was spotting there, but he couldn't make the call just yet. He couldn't know for sure if anyone was going to be there. That's a very aggressive play for Mouse Sports. And RPK now going to try and see if he can retake CT spawn, but Kerrigan will turn around and take down RPK. And now Saiwoo with the AWP really wants to make it out there. What a masterful hit for Mouse Sports. That is such a cool round. That's nice, and Alex has got to be really bummed. He almost had that second kill, which would have made this a much more doable round. Apex again, no support, no teammate with him, trying to rotate to CT spawn. A good position from Kerrigan, and a good double kill from the Mouse Sports in-game leader. Alex said he couldn't frag, but those were two critical ones there. Two to three. But still with that open play, Vitality is going to be, going to be fine to buy up in this next round. M4 has come out again. Yeah, that's kind of the silver lining at the moment, but um, I do think Alex could have had probably both. He took a little bit too long on the first one, and then by the time he transferred to Robs, Robs wasn't flashed anymore, so just, I think, uh, like half a second of difference there. But oh. it's worth mentioning, because that, that probably was the difference. Some spam coming in, Zywoo peering over the smoke. The other big thing is, throwing a fake like that, there was no more utility for the A bomb site. If, in fact, Tyler was able to have some kind of a retake situation, Mouse Sports had right. no utility to block them off or to slow them down. Mid control has gone the way of Mouse Sports, but Zywoo's gonna respond with one big kill for Kerrigan to find. You could almost see that Zywoo was, was ready to turn around and fight. He was like, I'm not gonna get out of here. Let me just see if I can take this shot. Didn't quite work out that way. So a pretty good even trade here. And any time, I think, especially on a map like Mirage, you take away that orb on Zywoo, that's gonna be, that's gonna be at least one path to success. We've talked a number of times, though. He is one of those oppers who is very, very good with rifles as well. So even if you have the economy down low where he can't afford the AWP, he can still be an impact. RPK holding onto this B bomb site all on his own. Three players from Mouseport, or from Vitality, actually very clumped up. And Kerrigan, he's going to be able to cut off the rotation. Is he aware of the second player? Yes, he is, but he can't win the fight. Now they can start rotating over towards the B bomb site. RPK needs one. He spots the information, and he's trapped. He's blind. They know where he is, and he can't get away. Ooh, he really committed that for a while, didn't he? I felt like he, maybe he could have got back in time, but now what do they do? Two versus three, and they're really far away from the site. It doesn't seem like they really want to go for it, and... I, yeah, I don't think they can. They don't really have a whole lot of money behind this, so Apex is going to save the AWP. Nice call in the middle of the round for Mouse Sports. And they were actually edging towards that bomb site for quite a while, while Kerrigan was holding the connector. So that's not bad. I mean, once you get some of those forward positions, either in window or in connector, uh, and you can just sort of rotate around it, either you know to A or B, you can catch people who are trying to, you know, follow through the middle of the map. That's usually a pretty good way to uh, to play this map. And Mouse Sports making it work early on in the half here, tying up the scoreline at three to three, and that's gonna be that's gonna feel really good for them. And also, that economy on Vitality gonna start to drop a little bit low early here. Uh, just great mid control from Mouse Sports. I mean, uh, Vitality is going to have to do something to, to be able to pro stop and prevent that, or at least slow it down, neutralize some of the damage. We've seen a number of times Ops really struggle to do it because of the utility usage that has become so common that is just so standardized now. You really need a coordinated effort, and it's been an issue. If you go back to the pistol round as well, they weren't able to control it then either. So timeout, an early timeout for Vitality going into round seven. It's tied up three to three, but obvious that they want to take a moment to discuss this because it's the last buy they'll have for some time after this, maybe dropping down to a half buy, maybe just full saving. But 
This is their last chance, at least uh, in the early stages of this map, to mount some kind of a defense and then return the favor, maintain a lead, or retake the lead. Let's see if they're gonna be able to. They have slightly better behind than I was expecting, honestly. Especially that AWP on Simu is obviously a big change. Not going for anything aggressive in this round, though. I mean, Apex is still playing middle alone, and they've got double B and quite a forward position over here, which I don't know. That I consider that to be quite risky. If Molotov starts to rain in, you can spam through up at the apartments. That can definitely be scary. Well, Mouse Sports is playing it very passively as well. They were looking to see any kind of aggression. They were thinking, all right, well, surely Vitality has a, a different plan in mind. That's well, that, boosted up and scoped in. That's a freak away to peak to be the CT spawn, isn't it? Yeah, well, they've just made some noise. So Shox and Alex have to know this is coming. There's some utility coming out. Oh, that, that is an awkward flashbang. Shox is in trouble. And they, oh, what a win. That's a huge recovery. And there's still a second player underneath as well. There goes Shox, but they don't know Alex's position. Oh, they spam him. The smoke was a dead giveaway. And three defenders fall so quickly. Now the op comes into play, but I think it's too late to recover. Yeah, it's not worth losing it once again here in a two versus four. That's not going to be a good idea. Mouse Sports will find a fourth round here. I mean, the whole idea, surely, of, of having that double setup is that whoever goes down first, in this case, that would have been shocks. The, the last player alive in there ha like, just has to remain undiscovered for a yes. double kill or something. You have to capitalize on that. And um, that didn't really work out. Once you put down the smoke, as you said, there's uh, not much guessing left. What a fantastic early start for Mouse Sports. I think they're going to be they're going to be feeling good about this, and they're doing all this in spite of the fact that Chris has got zero kills still, uh, which may not necessarily be his fault. Well, as Chad said, he's still he's still just you know checking the apples, checking the oranges, making sure everything's good for the day. That was an interesting analogy. I thought that was very interesting. I. I would actually just love to see Chad in any kind of customer relationship type job or like customer service type Dealing job. with customers? Yeah, just any job where you can deal with customers. I think, in fact... That's, that's maybe a content piece that, for the next, the next DreamHack. If we could put him back in that shop for a day and have him... Well, we, could, we got what pimp back in the hot dog stand for a minute. There we go. We'll so throw him back in the produce section. If we get Chad back and people, customers go and say, sorry, but my apples weren't quite good enough. And yeah, there's and, a brown spot in this apple. Oh, that would be golden, wouldn't it? That's... Let's work to make that happen for uh, for a minute. After the game, though. <laughs> Round well, of eight. Yeah, and three in a row for Mouse Sports. And as we mentioned, they've, they've pretty much done it. Small buy around the saved weapons. Zywoo with the AWP and RPK with the Famas. They need something to deliver. The AWP is here at the AA bombsite and Shox has flashed through. He sees more nades come out. He's not protected. He nails the headshot. Kerrigan, the only one coming up. He was leading the way by a good couple of seconds and Shox has repositioned. That was pretty good. I thought maybe Carrigan would have hurt him, but didn't seem like he had his crosshair right in the perfect position. And now they're going to be peeking side with that's Chris going down early again. On the other side, Woxic wants to take the fight, but if you go down here, the round is pretty much over. There's still a minute left. You actually, you need to thin this out a little bit. They have two flashbangs left to try and peek Saibu as well, and now the smoke is up. Oh, dear. Yeah, I was going to say, they, they have no utility. I don't know how it got to this point so early on, but they've used it all somewhere, and they've obviously gained absolutely nothing. In fact, They've lost the entire map. Alex, with his flank, has so much information. Now, he should not be peeking here. He should just stay on the other side of those, those stairs. You have four players at the eight bomb site. That's where you want them to go. If you go down as Alex, you open up an escape route for Mouse Sports. And Zaiwu just going to hang on to this off. The flashbang, it works, but not as well as they would have liked. A follow-up from Zaiwu. He's got a triple kill in the round. Delivering again and jumping up for a fourth. He shot him through the box as well as through the, uh, the bricks over there. Very impressive, and that is kind of the style that we're used to seeing. And some of these kills weren't even like, they weren't even very difficult kills. He's just holding this angle really well, but this is a good lesson, isn't it, for anyone new to the game? Normally, the, the incoming attacking side or, or the T side, they're going to be throwing smokes to cover this angle, and that's why. Otherwise, that AWP long range has such a powerful advantage. Mouse sports need to... Um, Need to make sure they, they save at least a couple of smokes for that reason. Oh, I'd be interested to see where all their where all their utility went that round. Did they use so much for Kerrigan to gain that foothold towards Tetris, and it was just it was just denied by shocks? Because the, yeah. the fact that was, there was fifty some seconds left and only two flashbangs, so they used a lot somewhere and didn't didn't try and capitalize on it. So maybe a miscue from Mouse Sports. Coach, as the timeout comes to an end, hyping his boys up. Well, that forward smoke that 
shocks ran through, you can sometimes throw on the T side to almost create a staging area, right? Like when you get yes. over the ramp, you have a place to stand up Tetris there. So maybe that's, yeah, maybe that is what happened. This round, they're starting off with three smokes in the middle. That Oh, actually, that's how they set up the fake last time. Actually, one of the smokes is going to go really deep all the way into the jungle. That is a very cool smoke thrown. Don't get to see too many of those, and they're quickly in flashbangs, raining in the speed here behind Mouse Sports. It's so impressive. Already committed to the bomb site. Oh. Shots deleted off the map, and Kerrigan, that's a great follow up. They're going to take Cyber as well. Rops in charge of that one with the Krieg, and that's they've just wiped them out on this bomb site. That is. Man, the analysts are going to have fun with some of these rounds. Yeah, that's a very cool change of pace. That's a very cool call for Kerrigan and Mouse Sports to be able to make that work. Not a bad defense, just the timing of everything is so disjointed, probably because Kerrigan gets that immediate headshot on Shocks. If he's able to have some kind of a fight for a couple seconds, Alex maybe is a little bit more effective. Zaiwu is able to get around that smoke and have space to go to work. But that's brutal. Another round where Vitality can't even fight for it. These last two players, Apex and RPK, just have to fully save. And Mouse Sports again going to regain the lead, 5-4. to four. At least money for Vitality is not an issue. They've got plenty of cash built up to buy in the next round. We talk about that frequently. You mentioned those three smokes, the same ones used to set up a fake previous in this half, showing a similar kind of opening to a round, but being able to build a variation on it, obviously very effective here for Mouse Sports. I think the problem is as well, that smoke, especially one towards jungle, people see that smoke usually in the context of a, of a sort of regular A execute, and then you expect most of the push to come in from the A ramp. Now, when you see it that early in a round, you might not even really know instinctually how to react. Like, do you go to try and, and challenge in connector, right. or do you fall back behind it? And it turns out if you fall back behind it, you can't help out Shox, who's inside of the bombs. Like, but you have to make that call in like two seconds, or they're going to be there. So, like, that smoke was thrown from T spawn, and it was, it was actually, it, because it takes so long, it bounces off the roof, it, it has to fall and land before it pops. It actually is so well timed. That's just, that's just an amazing strategy. You like to see um, Carrigan come in with that kind of a call. Well, this time, Mouseports switches things up again. Not a change of, or I mean, it's another change of pace, slow things down, but a lot of bodies towards the B bomb site. Carrigan and underpass looking for aggression and Rops over towards that A bomb site, A ramp. Smoke is going to help Carrigan have some kind of a presence in middle if he wants to go for it. And actually, all the Mouse Sports players now, they expected some kind of aggression at B. Perhaps because they've had such an A focus, they figured maybe Vitality would start getting cheeky on the other side of the map. It's not happening here. All that's happened is Woxic has taken a decent amount of damage, down to 27 HP, but it's okay. He can sit back with the AWP. Still, though, not a lot of utility for the attacking side for this hit. Two smokes come out towards jungle, towards triple boxes, and Shox has an AWP as well. Take care of Chris. Again, no fortune for him at the moment. Kerrigan also going down, and he was the one meant to be backstabbing through connectors. So as soon as that goes away, Vitality can really relax a lot more. 27 seconds here, so Mouse Sports, if they want any chance of this, they're going to have to commit to this right now and win the next couple of fights, or it's not even going to be close to a bomb plant in this round. Shock's playing it very conservatively. That's a nice flick, actually. And taking down Woxic. And certainly now it's all done. The question is, can Mouse Sports do some damage here, or are they just going to be giving another good round to Vitality? Because if they survive with all these rifles, that's it's going to be pretty good for the French side. I was going to say, it's a shame they can't do any more damage, but you understand why. Apex going to turn the corner, he goes down. That's all that Vitality can really risk. There's not enough money for them to send more bodies at that. Good hold, but what we've seen out of Vitality, we mentioned, or I mean, out of Mouse Sports, we've seen it a number of times. Their utility seems to be so focused on that initial hit onto a part of the map or onto a bomb site. If they get shut down, like if the first few players go down without any kind of effect, there's no more utility for Mouse Sports to recover. There's no plan B in some of these rounds for well, the attackers. First it was Sai Wu, now it was Shox in that position, unsmoked. So that's, that's two rounds. I'm not saying they would have won them necessarily if they'd smoked it, but you certainly see what happens if you don't. And a third one surely can't be allowed, you know? Next time you're taking that fight, you want to you put more pressure on that, that all player. It's not too unusual not seeing a smoke there. A lot of teams will let it go and just trust in a, in a couple flashbangs to force the upper back, but then they'll put like a follow-up Molotov so they can't re yeah. into it, or follow-up nades or flashbangs. But now they sports, they, they're not even getting that chance. Shock or, or Zaiwu has picked them off each and every time. I don't think they threw any flashbangs over even. I think they just not that time, yeah. So um, that's a bit rough. Carrigan making his way in the window. Shox is right there with the AWP, and I think he must have heard some of those drops. So, Bomb's still quite far back, and Robs is over at the A ramp. Carrigan is now checking out if anyone's pushing B, so that I think they're trying to be real careful early in this round. 
They're obviously expecting some change from the defense. They still and they have two smokes and two molotovs and no flashbangs. Yeah, once again, utility being an issue for Mouse Sports. This time you could see some of the money is very low. Chris J at 100, Woxic at zero. Maybe just not the funds needed, but certainly towards this B-bomb site. No flashbangs here is going to be tough, and they've got to go now. RPK just waiting patiently, biding his time, and there's the first turn, and he can only get the one. Good trade, and Zyru missed his chance earlier as well. Next, that's a big kill taking down Kerrigan. Otherwise, he would have... Try to gatekeep that part of it. Now the bomb is down, sure, but they're three versus four and they're locked on the side. Apex with a good follow-up, taking down Frozen. And Woxic, he's got himself in a position. Immediate headshot to take down. He's ready for more. Alex goes down as well. Woxic, a triple that he's working on, but he's going to have to do the rest on his own. He finds the angle against Saiwu and now Shock's coming in with the AWP, making a lot of noise. Oh, can he turn it? Can he actually win it? Shock will deny it. Almost the ace clutch. But Shock's going to be able to bring it back. A sixth round for Vitality. Dan, that is so close, ladies and gentlemen. Shock's with 12 and 4. That's, that's bad news for Mouse Sports. That was a nasty little shoulder peek off the jump from Shock's because Woxic played this so well. Look at this follow up kill on Alex. He even baits out an awkward moment, an awkward fight for Zaiwu here, missing his chance. But the follow up from Shock's is just a thing of beauty. They brought him in, Chad mentioned it, to be the closer. He is the guy to end the rounds, end the, end the map. Zaiwu is the engine, but he's there to finish things off, and he delivers very, very nicely, preventing a ca catastrophic loss. And delivering little kisses to his microphone, I think, there, so. Is that so, what that was? Uh, I'm not sure. I want to make, maybe these teammates can hear it. I'm just trying to spread the love on that team. That's I very think. French. That would be very French, wouldn't I? I thought I would appreciate that. We've got a bunch of deagles, so. How do you feel about a good 1D this round, or maybe a couple of them? I'd love it. I'm all, I'm all down. Ooh, Karen's. He looks like he wants to challenge that smoke. That, Not a great idea. He's, he's, learned his, he's learned his lesson. Man, Shock's putting up a stellar performance. He hadn't got that, <laughs> that all access pass to the A bomb side. No, that's that's some uh, next level kind of security, keeping <laughs> him, keeping him out. Well, Woxic might be able to deliver. Got a cheeky position, but unfortunately for him, this B defense is so far back, so passive and at off angles that no one's going to be peeking in to give him any kind of an opportunity. You know, he's already been heavily damaged. And he's going to take the risk anyways. 15 HP, why not go for it? Problem is you can't drop down. You have to let someone walk into the open. He might have his chance there, but Apex has looked for it. Another denial. I don't even think any of these deagles have gotten a shot off yet. No, they've, they've just been waiting for a long time. I love what Woxic was trying to do. I think that's very cool. There's even a world, I think, in which Apex just doesn't even see that. You know, he's just not aware of it. So, still, three of us is five, and maybe in some weird way they can sneak up for a bomb plant. Apex is covering that long angle all the way over from Catwalk, so it won't be easy, but I wouldn't rule it out. 30 seconds. Frozen on the corner, walking up with Saiwu, and, well, they actually get the bomb plant. That's... That's pretty good. Uh, you, you understand the passive defense is, is oh, that, there's your one dig. We've been waiting for that the whole round, and now this can get dangerous. And obviously, RPK cannot go through that murder hole. It's way, way too dangerous, and Rops is up next. And this is sketchy for Vitality. It is. They have a lot of smoke, so they can block off a lot of shots here. So, yeah, double smoking the bomb. Even Rops is waiting on the side. He's going to be able to take down Alex. Vitality this round was already over with the first two kills, and somehow it's not Robs coming in from behind and taking down Saiwu, and now RPK, he can't even think about the defuse right now. He's out of time and out of luck, and Mouseport stealing this round from right under Vitality. That is absolutely outrageous. That's highway robbery. That can't happen. I was just about to say, you can understand the passive defense. You can understand that they, they don't want to get picked off by anything. They want to wait back, especially with the AWPs. But this is way too passive. The fact that Mouse Sports is allowed to walk all the way into the bomb site before they even know they're there, that is, that is a huge miscue. They've had a couple of those in this defensive stand. But God, that one is, is brutal for the morale. It really is. And even you would even think in a round where someone's going to be diffusing inside of a smoke, if the other team has deagles, that's great. You know, the chances that they have, they have seven, seven chances each. And yeah. if they have to take a bit of a fight first, maybe they don't even have that. So, I, I mean, the odd part of your vitality is unfortunately those smokes they put on the bomb right at the end actually help Rops maneuver around the bomb site. You have yeah. to give him credit. He played that so stellar using, his, using, the, using the audio cues, using the smoke and the default boxes to work his way around and stay isolated to other defenders. That was uh, really well done from him. 
Oh, Obviously it's... presented the chance by Vitality's mistakes. They actually wanted to push middle this round, Vitality, with the pistols, but it's a very fast A execute once again for Mouseport, and the pistols for the retake, it, they're not going to be doing much of anything at all. It's a very quick round, and Chris gets a triple. The one dig in the last round was his first kill of the game, so it's nice to see him on the server. I, uh, that was his first kill, the one dig. Yeah, that was his first one. Fair play. It's a pretty important kill to get. It is a pretty important kill. And I wasn't really too worried. I've... I've got, I'm, I'm, I have a pretty high opinion of Chris. I think he's a great player. I really like him. I think like a lot of us frequently do. I think he's, he's pretty much he's frequently met, mentioned when we talk about underrated players. I still think he's, he provides a lot of value. Here we go again. Utility used over the wall. This time it's not everything. Shock's missing a shot, and this is a tough spot to get out of. All of his utility coming out to keep him alive. And Kerrigan, he wants that life. He wants everything, and he's found it. Opened up the bomb set, and he's not going to stop over the smoke as well. This is so dangerous. He can actually stop this retake before it begins, and a second follow-up. Wow, Kerrigan is having himself a fantastic game right now. Going to be helped by Chris as they try and retake CT. Spawn and Saibu gets run down. Third kill for Kerrigan. Has hardly even been touched yet. And Alex, well, they're going to find him to a quad kill for the captain of Mouse Sports as they bring in eight rounds in the first half already. Those A pushes, the fast ones, they've just realized. I think Kerrigan is saying, you know what? They don't know how to stop us doing that. I can't believe I just watched Kerrigan do this. He never let go of W. He's moving forward the whole way. This is like him playing as a berserker. He's now 13 and 10. You want to talk, he's leading the way for his team in kills, also in deaths, and that just goes to show you, he's the one leading from the front, creating that space that we just saw there. He's rewarded with so many kills. Last round of this first half. Aggression in the underpass. Nate comes out, that's a good angle for it, and Chris Chase found that kill. Low HP is going to get finished off. But Shox, I don't think he can get much more than this. And surely they don't let him get away. Walks to aware of the follow-up push. And a nice job from Mouse Sports. Yeah, there was a minute there where things were getting a little bit too hot over in the B hallways, but um, they managed to find their way out. Yeah, Carrigan, I mean, this, what, a, what, a great, uh, what a great round to come out with. And it, it isn't even his first one. He's had a fair few rounds like that opening up and, and creating all of the space. Alex trying to sneak him a Rob's. At least looks like he's thinking about it. And regardless, even if the situation stays like, hey, Kerrigan's actually checking out the A ramp now. If he if he calls in that there's no one A and they all fall back into the hands of Alex, that could get weird. That's maybe the only chance that Vitaly can get back into this round. Yeah. It's gonna be tough. He's gonna oh, have to look. find a great timing and he has only an SMG. He's gonna hear the footsteps and he's gonna go for the backstab. Double for the range. That is not where you want that rifle. I think he had the right idea and... No, he had the perfect idea. He's just saying, God, I wish I had an M4. Anything but the SMG, really. Maybe even a P250 would have been better. Yeah, you're not wrong. Now it's Saibu instead of one versus four. He's already been spotted nine to six in the first half in favor of Mouse. Spearheaded by another than other than the leader, Kerrigan. 14 and 10 on the half. And he was always leading the way, front and center, on their attacks. And here we go, some aggression. Wachnik under pressure and shut down immediately. So is Frozen. And the underpass has been opened up. This split towards the A bomb site is going to be so dangerous. Yeah, we're going to need some USP kills very, very quickly. Chris will pick up one, but Carrigan goes down. And Chris is next to fall. And Rops, he is alone. And they are all coming for him. RPK will take him down in the end. And Vitality with a very swift round. Once they win that fight in the... Uh, in the underpass, it's, it's just so quick behind that. If they had slowed that down, though, that's actually where the USPs would have had such a better chance. So it's kind of good that they did that. Yeah, kind of, they kind of beat a couple of them to, the, to their point of rotation so they can actually make their way up and towards the bomb site. That was very good aggression. Investment from the Mouse Sports defense. Scout is going to be on Walksick, four smokes and HE grenades. Scout on Chris J as well. We haven't seen him pick up the, uh, the AWP too much recently. Wow. Good nade, but obviously very effective with these weapons. Now, Mouse Sports did win a ridiculous round with uh, just Eagles when they were on the T side. Now they've got some scouts, they've got a lot of smokes. Vitality cannot let this round go. I realize it's only the grenade damage so far, but if, if something goes wrong here, that's going to be very hard to explain. Yeah, tough scout shot. Maybe another one of those one digs. Four players at the A bomb site, and actually Rops is making the power play. He's got great positioning, great information, probably hearing these footsteps as well. As long as he doesn't push too far, though, he can be very, very effective, very impactful as this round plays out. Late window smoke all the way from T spawn. 
Now, most of the middle, in fact, all of the middle has been denied for information here. Mouseport's not really sure what's coming, although Chris has seen a couple of people and he's going to be falling back. I think calling for backup, you see already rotating in. It's going to be Woxic with the other scout. Chris will pick up one, and now they're down at the low ground. Any more damage here to Vitality, and this might not work out. A double kill for Chris before he finally falls, but Woxic, that was the early rotation I was talking about. The flank through T-spawn is going to take a long time, and they can't stop the bomb plant. Woxic, I think that's what he wanted to do. But now they're in a two-on-two, -two and actually Vitality have a pretty good shot at winning this. Get a little bit of a peek there towards the window. Oh, they try and go aggressive. And that leaves Saiwu alone in a one versus two. Frozen, somehow ready for it. And this is very, very tricky here. If they lose this round, Vitality, they might lose the map very quickly. Indeed, he's going to hit a good headshot. Ready for the flank as well. He turns it on them. And a nice one versus two, saving it barely. That was way too close. And again, you have to lean on your superstar to bail you out of that one. Well done from Zai Wu in the one versus two. Those deagles so dangerous. What a great initial hold as well from Chris J with the scout. That is not an easy attack to stop like the way he did with the scout. A couple kills just to slow things down and the rotation came in perfectly. Still, Vitality almost dropping another second round after winning the pistol. That would have been so brutal in this opening map of the series. This round is going to be much more simple for Vitality. Everyone towards the A bomb site. Plenty of utility, no armor on any of the mouse sports players, no real weapons to speak of, a couple upgraded pistols, but the Mac 10s should be able to do work, and the AKs at range should be just fine. Not even a flashbang on mouse sports, it's very disappointing. Especially over that mid peak, you know? We can yell at him later. Yeah, we'll do that. Just bring a single one. It's good to see that Chris has fought his way back. He's sort of, he's actually caught up to the rest of his team now. Um, tied, I think, with uh, Rock. So that's that's just amazing. I'm not really surprising again, because he's just a, a very good player. But uh, did have a rough start to the game. There's the Mac 10 going to be picking off Carrigan. Oh, a run boost. That's pretty clever. Doesn't do anything uh, except look cool. That's but enough. That's one way to go out. If you had to pick a way to go out, it'd be through a run boost like that. You certainly make an entrance. They won't. They won't forget soon. Next time, bring a Zeus and it really complete the, uh, the complete the whole spectacle. Make that happen. What, All tied up. What at, is this? Ooh, everyone's got got weird uh, little mascots these days. Good luck charms. Can you bring little animals as mascots if it's like a little gerbil or something on the stage? That wouldn't be allowed. Uh, yeah, well, not like not a real one. Hold the thought, hold the gerbil conversation. Frozen inside the bomb site. Woxic is gonna pair up with another one at range. They're holding on as best they can. And that's actually very well. Alex, so low, he can't be involved in the action. So RPK's done all the work, but now it falls onto the in-game leader's shoulders. And I think he's just gotta bail out to the other bomb site. Try and do something tricky. Use this time to your, to your advantage. Try and get them to rotate away from each other and find a one versus one. But this is a very, very difficult scenario to win. Yeah, one bullet connecting with him and he's done. That early defense worked out very well. Frozen and Boxic just absolutely standing tall on that A-bomb site. And I like this from Chris. He's saying, if you're going to be rotating over to this B-bomb site, I want to know early. Ooh, and Carrigan just not even a fight there. Taking him down right away. Would have been so much better for, uh, for Alex if he could have run into the AWP. Maybe there was a missed shot. Maybe he could do something. Yeah, this is a great hold. Frozen inside the site, nowhere to go really. He's got to be forced into a peak. The AWP comes out as well. Now sports on the board early, but they do take a good amount of damage. That's the one silver lining for Vitality. The economy has been chipped away. Some of the money is missing from the mouse sports side. They need a clean win. And actually, this is, this is a huge round, economically speaking, for both teams. This is going to determine who's going to go into the next few rounds with the economy advantage. No Molotov for Chris position yet. Going to be throwing one for Frozen instead. Rob's down towards CT spawn. There's still a two-man hole on this bomb side, and Vitality, they got such an early kill. They don't even want to commit to it. Oh, Frozen! That's so bold and shocked. He will reply with one better. That AK-47 making quick work. And now Chris, this is this is a lot of trouble. Shox has the Molotov. He's already thrown it down there. Chris, for, oh, actually, I think it caught. It must have caught on the ledge there. I think he wanted to. Yeah, he definitely wanted to put it out there. That, what a weird round, but look at Alex. He's gained so much space over towards the B-bomb site. Wow. He's called for the escape route. RPK coming back with the bomb shocks and slower pursuit, but Wait. this is the X Factor. Kerrigan lurking through underpass. He's going to hear the footsteps. He has the information. Shocks, I don't think, will be prepared for this. 
Yeah, but will Carrigan, if Shox, Shox is walking now, Carrigan might be the one to get shot at the back. Oh, he actually turns for it. That is unbelievable. Shox must have no idea why he was even checking for that. He already heard one player going past now. RPK is very low on health, but Alex, he could still be working with this. He's going to be taken down. Chris and Kerrigan falls on the other side. And now Woxic, he gets the kill anyway. Now definitely the M4 is the better choice here. RPK on the other side. Very low and he peeks right into it. Woxic going to be winning the round in spite of everything. If I'm Alex, I'm going to be so upset. That nine out of ten times, that's a round winning play. Yeah, the Kerrigan heads up to check from behind to grab Shox is massive, and we didn't get to see the RPK battle, but, but Alex did everything he possibly could to get his team out of a tough spot. You also have to admire, that's a cool way for Vitality to find, you know, picks over towards the 8-bomb site. One pop flash to blind the upper back towards CT spawn, the position we saw Shox and Zaiwu playing in the first half, and he held Rops pinned down behind the ticket booth. That was very cool. Unfortunate they can't win that based off Alex's positioning. But you have to believe, you have to think, Vitality surely invests something into this round. Not much, it's not going to be everything, it's not going to be rifles. But they once again got it down to a one-on-one. -on -one. They got a bomb plant. They have to be looking and thinking of this economy situation for the defense and saying, we know it's still tenuous, we know they don't have a lot of money built up. Let's at least keep this pressure on with kills. Well, they actually invest more than I was even thinking. Alex down under a thousand. Now, they do have a bit of a loss bonus, but still, that's, that's kind of pushing it in my opinion. Must mean they're banking on getting a plant here. Yeah, then it kind of makes sense again, doesn't it? Or at least you have to hope so. Still, it's Kerrigan and Chris that are in this position, and Kerrigan's got that MP9, which means even falling back if they try and rush him, he's going to be pretty lethal. Like, you know, mobility is really uh, a bit of a strength with that weapon. Well, here's the tough part. Kerrigan has no nades left. Neither does Chris J. So all that utility to defend this B bombsite has been baited out, and look how much there is on the vitality side for this attack. Yeah, the weapons are in the favor of mouse sports, but if they're blind, those weapons won't matter, and here we go. Yeah, it's going to be the full push into it. Nice bang, a little bit shallow. The Molotov not going to force anyone out, but you're right. It's just one good grenade here on Carrigan, and it's going to be all done. He's dodged most of it, but the last one connects, and now it's just Chris inside of the smoke fighting for his life. Backup is there, but it all gets run down. What a round from Vitality. That worked perfectly. You said it as well. They definitely had the weapons, but not the utility. There were three flashbangs left in the end. If we rewind that, we're going to see the first two missing, the last one connected, and that's all they needed. Well, also, with that amount of utility, Vitality gets to dictate where the fight takes place, right? There's no Molotov for Mouse Sports to drop that can, that can shift the point of attack. There's no nades that will, like, lower them down. There's no flashbangs to prevent them from coming through a smoke. Mouse Sports, even going back to the first half, they've had issues with their utility usage throughout this map. And once again, they're going to be punished by it. Three weapons picked up so far for the Vitality team as well. That's going to bolster their own money. What a turnaround. 11 to 10, and Vitality right back in it. Very well done indeed. Almost catching up now to Mousesports. 10 to 11, the scoreline. And um, currently leading the board is going to be 19 kills on Saibu. Hardly su surprising. Shocks on 17 kills. If that remains a strong duo, that is kind of a terrifying thought. And Kerrigan is not that far behind on 16 kills. The economy right now for both teams, that is the big open question. Whatever team wins that fight probably takes the map. This feels like it's gonna get this is gonna start getting really scrappy, really brawly as teams fight with whatever they can muster into the rounds. As you say, the, the money issue is such a big problem. Very quiet from both teams. Chris J close on towards catwalk, frozen inside the window room. Inside the ladder room, I should say. Listen, I like the thought of that. Scrappy, dirty Counter-Strike. That's, that's what I'm all about that's here. That's style, all about the dirty. Yeah, let's bring it to that level. And I mean, you almost have to, as you said, when, when you don't have the grenades, when you don't have all the weapons you really want, you've got to try and improvise a little bit. We saw Mouse Sports were very good with those early, really fast A hits on the T side. That worked beautifully. We'll see what Vitality can do if they're going to do something similar. So far, it's a little bit slower. Now, they've got Alex deep in the middle, and he's going to smoke it off. I think he's walking through his own smoke to go in a window. That's in itself kind of bold, and he takes the fight and wins it against Frozen. Even had a bit of a delay in that one, and now the B-bomb side. Oh, wait, they're going to be falling back. It looked like they could have crunched it easily. 
And there must have been a call. There must have been some kind of information passed along. And actually, only two players coming into connectors. I and Apex have to be careful. Their team is very far behind, and time is running out. This is a pretty disjointed attack. Mouse Sports have yet to mount any kind of a defense. Rops deep into CT spawn, but Kerrigan at a ramp. He can do so much, but I think he might have been spotted. Can't win that fight, and that's huge. That allows the bomb to go down. All the kills going to Vitality. It was a bit head-scratching why they adjusted their point of attack, but it's worked out all the same. Boy, that very well indeed. I was getting scared because, as you said, almost no time left. The 20 seconds there. If Kerrigan gets a kill and, and can somehow prevent the bomb, that's going to be bad news. But what a great round. A flawless round, in fact, out of Vitality. 11-11, they've tied it all up. What a great game to begin this quarterfinals with. 20 kills on Saibu. So um, that is definitely part of the story. And then shocks as well. I, I don't want to, because I don't want to jinx it. I don't want to get myself too high. But the idea of, of a well-functioning shocks in this team, man, that's Christmas come early for me, at least. Well, it's got to make you feel, I mean, uh, also like, look at the other parallel. Look at Navi with Guardian. Yeah. Now we're starting to finally, we've been waiting so long for the resurgence of some of these old players who have spent time as some of the best players in the world and waiting for them to come back to some, some semblance of that level. And finally, we're getting it with Guardian, as we saw yesterday. Today, Shock's having a good game, and yeah, that would be a, a very, very special experience. That's, that's your commitment right there. Said, you know what, I will never make it out, but I'm taking somebody with me. And it was Saibu. If you could get the follow-up headshot, certainly that would have been... That would have been unfair. That would have been very unreasonable to get two kills like that inside the flames. Alex marshalling his troops, but Kerrigan, ooh, this is actually a bit scary. He's like, turn for a pop flash, and he turns around at the right second, but it doesn't matter. Kerrigan finds that kill, three on three, and nobody's in the bomb site, thankfully for Vitality, so no real risk as they enter in here. And Mouse Sports, you have to wonder if they're going to think this is worth it trying to go for it. Kerrigan has picked up an M4, and he's going to at least try and find an early kill, but they know he's in this position. Yeah, I would say probably not worth it. They're going to find that M4 right back. Chris is an AK as well. I mean, I guess they can buy the next round, so so it's not like it co it's going to cost them a rifle exactly. Well, there's some damage output there on RPK and Apex, but overall, this has been uh, this has been a good recovery for Vitality. Could have gone wrong, I think, and if there had been someone in the bomb site that they would have had to fight, that that would have been, you know, a bit of an issue. Mouse still not finding a way to really turn the economy in their favor. That's the third round in a row that a Vitality are going to win. Yeah. So they need that on that CT side. They, they would probably themselves love some kind of a double up setup if they can. Well, they can't afford it in this round. Even Frozen 7K can drop one over, and that's exactly what he's done. But yeah, they've, they've struggled with the money for uh, frequently. And just two round wins sandwiched between, you know, six rounds from Vitality, three on each side. Vitality very dominant in this second half. The offense is clicking in a big way. Early smokes towards B. This is sort of faking a B, a B attack. Like they're going to be throwing the flashbangs in, but we, we know that that's not going to happen. They broke the Molotovs as well. They're really, really committed to this fake right now. And it's not really drawing anyone out. Kerrigan is just looking at it saying, I'm not seeing anyone here, so... Listen, all those nades just kind of signify that it's meant to be like, oh, the B rush of some sort. But when you see no bodies, it's very easy to call the fake. And in fact, now that they didn't sell that fake, it might even hurt more. Because now you're going to start having players from Mouseport start investigating towards mid, start being a little bit more aggressive, and Woksik, he's prepared. I feel like that fake works so well if Kerrigan isn't that forward, if, he, if he's not on the truck, if he's really far back. I think Alex is meant to actually jump out and go for something with the SMG. I think he got caught inside the smoke, ran into a wall, wasn't able to have impact, so they've had to kind of make some things up on the fly. Woksik with the AWP, he doesn't even, he's not even prepared for Palace, not even considering it. And miscommunication, no one's even watching that. So he goes down for free, and that is a free A bomb site. Truly head scratching around this one, surely. They got the information, and yet Woksik is the only one holding, and he's holding both angles at the same time. I don't even want to try and explain that. Kerrigan and Frozen have both gone down in the meantime, and Robs looking to stop the bomb plant. I mean, if he could have got back around the corner, that would have been very cool. But now it's on Chris instead, one versus two. And he's coming up the connector. They know that because of the flashbang, and they're already looking for him. Saibu will take him down. Another double kill here for him.
and a 13th round for Vitality. I'm so confused about this defense from our sports in this particular round. Yeah, that was a that was a very rough round. That's not going to be one that they go back and highlight for any kind of positive reinforcement. That was uh, pretty ugly. Miscommunication from, from Waxnick and whoever else is defending that eight bomb site, but he was well overexposed. Still a bit of a battle for Vitality to get in even after they got that free kill on him, though. I mean, you can throw a different kind of fake, right? Where you, where you throw the initial smoke for a, for a hit, you wait 20 seconds, then you do it again, and then you actually go. So I don't know if that's what they thought was happening there on the mousebot side, but it was very confusing. Well, here's a double op setup. Ooh, and actually, like, who comes unblinded and almost hits that flick on the jump. That's, uh, the fact that that's even... That would have been illegal, I Something think. that looked realistic is a bit mental. It's a double op setup, but... Nothing really surrounding it. It's just pistols, but they'll have to let the AWPs do most of the work. And I think at some point, Mouse Sports, they're going to have to gamble over to a bomb site and stack it up. At least give yourself a chance to win the round, and if not, at least have some kind of buddy system to protect the AWPs. If you're not going to win this round, you cannot lose the ops during this attack. Yeah, first. First priority, obviously, is win, but if that slips away, then qu quick plan B is try and save what you can, Wokstick. He gets back from the ticket booth, at least, but you've got to be very careful here. How do you even pretend to repeat this? Frozen is going to be alone for a while. Kerrigan is now starting to make his way there, but that CC does nothing at all, and I would already say now, Wokstick, it's so dangerous being here. He is actually with a very, very strong position, boosted over to look into it, but again, you've already lost Kerrigan. The bomb is not planted for your position, and you need to get out right now. Yeah, they're well, right underneath. Alex is here. One good flashbang, and they're going to start to make their way back. But I, I was going to say, they, they even then, they overstayed their welcome a little bit, and it still might cost them. Oh, the AWP. I don't know. Yeah, they're lucky they got away. They were sticking off a very... Even Chris J came up very close to connectors if he wanted to go for a retake. So they do call it off and they do get away for now, but I think they're being hunted. Shocks once more and he's not prepared. Knife out, he thought they were still in the B bomb site. They never had information on Chris J, so Shocks thought he had some more time to get close. But that'll allow Mouse Sports to keep the weapons in their hands, so just simply a silver lining for the defense. And a 14-11 scoreline for the Vitality side as they march off to this uh, march on to what's looking like a first map win for them but i mean still still maybe one or two more chances for mouse sports to fight back it's got to be right now though it's got to be but uh i do believe that they're just fixing a keyboard issue so 14 to 11 scoreline here and a little bit of a, a breathe of both teams this is so hard to uh to deal with right now and the second half has been they've won two rounds mouse sports on their defensive side their economy has been shattered pretty much all throughout and it's been I don't know, it's been kind of weird. We haven't even seen... There's been some rounds where they've been checked. Carrigan had the CC on the A ramp where he was going a bit aggressive, but otherwise they've been quite passive. And I feel like Vitality have been allowed to do a lot on this uh, on this T side. And they've been allowed to dictate a lot of the game. And we've seen some miscues. We've seen some uh, some utility and Molotovs overused. We, we you know we saw them in the first half as well. We obviously saw Walksick not um, believing maybe a teammate was covering Palace when that wasn't the case. And those are all like uh, miscommunications that you you sometimes expect. You sometimes talk about as a negative for a team like Mouse Sports that's so put together with international players, not communicating in their native language. But man, those have been some backbreaking losses. Nine to six in the first half, and they have just uh, not been able to handle anything from Vitality. Have not been able to keep them out of the bomb sites. They're going to try again here. Round 26. It's got to be right now. Coming out of the timeout. Yeah, this might be their last chance. I mean, it almost certainly is their last chance. 11 to 14. Of course they can bring it back. It's perfectly possible to string rounds together and try and see if they can stop this push from Vitality. Led so far by Saibu and Shocks. It has not been an easy task there to try and go aggressive, and Shocks is going to be there, and he almost takes both of them. Scrambling to save that AWP as Rops as he falls back into the bomb site, and a little bit of a follow-up aggression from Frozen. He's going to realize nobody else is over here, so can they string together a good defense behind this? That's a cool little triple nade in the mid-round in towards window as well. If someone were there, that'd be in a lot of trouble, but it's just, uh, it's just going to help Vitality clear that portion of the map out. No, they don't have to worry about anyone. And it might also signify that they are, you know, heading and attacking and controlling middle, but indeed they're falling all the way back. And the position from Frozen would be strong depending on, you know, how many people actually come in here. This is a, this is a frag that can get traded. And you could be sure Alex and Apex are going to clear every corner. Now moving out, awkward timing, and Apex has to win that, and he does. Big kill, and now Rops backs away with the AWP towards Ticket Booth. 
40 seconds, so RPK is still on the other side of the map, which is kind of interesting. I mean, he could go for the underpass pretty quickly, but they're still thinking about it. It's got to be a fake, you would imagine, from, from RPK. He hasn't, yeah, you're right, yeah. he hasn't budged. He's looking for some aggression, but at some point, he's either going to have to come join up. There's not a lot of time left. Shorty throw smoke. He's hey. going to go for a backstab, maybe set up on Catwalk to help prevent the, the, the defuse. Well, they spotted that, Robs. He knows. He's the gun barrel, doesn't even wait, taking down Apex. That seems a little bit unfair. Now Saibu gonna go for the bomb hunt, he's got no other choice. He just has to try and see if he can get it done. He's low, the bomb does go down, but RPK showing up from halfway across the map to get the kill on Kerrigan. That bomb is exactly planted for him, but that AWP is over there waiting for him. Actually, two AWPs are there. The smoke is huge in his favor. He can make it out at least. And that smoke on the other side from Mouseforce went way too far. RPK not able, he had the right idea. He knew they were gonna be at the edge, but Robs with the triple instead. And barely staying in the game here on Mouse Sports. And also, keeping the, keeping the double up alive is, is massive. They've had that for about three rounds now. That's been a dangerous point for the Vitality to attack into. Well done. Zaiwu just wanted to get away after this plant. Not enough time, and it was a nice job from Rops at the end, keeping information on RPK's position, seeing him coming up the stairs, seeing the way he's going to work around that smoke. He had all the intel the whole time. Some well-dressed guys. Oh, 100%. That guy's ready for Christmas. That's, um... That's, <laughs> you like to see that. Should get you one of those suits. I would, um... I would not be opposed to that. We could talk about that. Okay. Get near some, some Christmas Eve tournaments that are going to be happening. Maybe that's a good idea. 14 to 12. It just feels like this Mousewatch team is... I don't know. The, the difference for me between first and second half, where the first half looked really cool and, and sort of well coordinated, I liked the lower what I was seeing. On the defensive side, I'm I'm less impressed so far. Yeah, it feels much less cohesive, much less of a team effort on this on this uh, CT side for Mouse Sports. Still, they they have the scoreline close enough that they can still make this work. Alex going to be at top mid all alone. Molotov nade combination. They want to force him out. Smoke has to be utilized so he doesn't put himself in towards danger. But that's a nice job for Mouse Sports to force out some utility. Take some of the tools of vitality out of their hands. Alex is out of utility, out of nades entirely. I like that for Mouse Sports. That's it's one of the few times we've seen them do something where, where they're the ones taking the initiative. Robs is over on the other side here at the A ramp on this, just hiding at the edge of the smoke. and. I like that too. Just I think they need to do this so that Vitality can't just set up the kind of executes they've been able to otherwise. Now mid retake for Vitality at about a minute in the round. They still have a lot of grenades and mouse sports definitely don't, so they could do a lot with this. Very, very slow on the mid control here. Worried about some kind of a setup, and indeed there is a setup. Chris boosted up, and that's an easy kill. Apex never saw it coming. Never even considered it. Frozen inside the window room as well. Alex has the bomb. He's got to be very careful. That's a pick, and the tough part is, surely they come up connector. If he has the bomb here, but Frozen's going to pounce. He hears the footsteps. I woo. He goes down, and Alex is going to make a play. But again, with the bomb, this is just so risky. If he gets picked off, He's got his teammates here. Nice shot from RPK to cover him as they come up. But a ramp is Rops. He's going to have one, and he can just stay alive. Ten seconds on the clock, and they're all falling now. It's all on RPK, and he must stick this plant. Going to try and bait him out into the open, and he can't even do it. Mouse Sports planting their feet at the end of this map. And what a time to do it. Now, the, the really rough part about this is the fact that there's so much money on Vitality that they're going to have to do this another couple of times, but... I don't even, it's so strange to me that the bomb ended up on Alex alone, like you were saying, and then he sort of had to make a play, but once it goes down, there's, there's really not much left. 14 to 13, what a fantastic way to get this quarterfinals underway. Both teams obviously looking to, uh, to try and get off with a bit of a lead here. That was five in a row for Vitality before Mouse Sports took it back, now winning two in a row. And look to see if they can just stop them right at the last uh, second here. 23 kills on side with 21 on shocks and nobody yet in the, in the 20s over on mouse sports but they're all nicely caught up with each other there's a nice group effort going on on that side vitality's got to be a little bit nervous now that they've caught back up 
one round away, Mouse Sports, from tying this up, and it's felt so unlikely in this second half. What a phenomenal recovery. And it's off the back of this double up, and remember, they've been able to keep that in their hands for three or four rounds, even in two or three losses, they've been able to bring that forward. An incredible effort. Chris J will have his on catwalk and does not want to give away the fact that this is where the op is, not even unscoping as he comes down the ladder. Yeah, it's a small detail, isn't it? But against the level of opposition here, obviously don't want to give them anything to work with. Very common defense. Chris now going to be joining Carrigan over on the other side. Frozen taking a bit of random damage. Oh, but Robs finding Apex. That is... That's quite fortunate. They're going to try and split this A bomb site again. At least it looks like it for the moment, unless they readjust. Look up. Look over. He drops. He, he jumped to make the noise like he was running away, which would be the, you know, 99% of the time. That's what you do. And then he went back to the corner, and Saibu wasn't ready for it. He surely heard that jump. That's an amazing play from Robs. Yeah, he's playing quite the game. Now a boost up to peer over the smoke. I don't think it just came in a little bit late. Alex is already in the bomb site. Shox needs to cross over with that bomb. Some spam coming through, but RPK just patiently waiting. But he's surrounded. At some point, he needs to move forward. Very low on health. Frozen is surely going to check this. It's a free kill. Two versus three. One flashbang here for Alex now. Could he set Shox up for a kill? Molotov is going to be landing on top of him, and Shox has to fight to the death, and it's going to be a quick one. Kerrigan taking him down, and now Alex. The captain of the team in a one versus three. Oh, they almost line up for him. That actually could have been huge. He's back on eight health here. One flashbang to set it up, and they're out in the open. Carrigan will drop him, and they have enough time for the defuse. 14 rounds on Mouseports. They've tied it all up here in the first map. Man, we're getting it all, ladies and gentlemen. This is, this is the kind of battle you want to see who's going to make it to the semifinals. This is crazy. Vitality have such a difficult decision to make if they want to buy or not. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see his timeout come out. But they, they need to figure this out because they have money on two players. They do go for a very late buy and freeze time. They're picking it up still running into the round. So it's a late call, a late decision not calling the timeout. Zairu having an AWP might have been the deciding factor. No armor on that, but they're going to let him lead. They're going to let him hold the angle. And remember, earlier on, they used one pop flash to allow him to get that, and here it comes again. There's the one flash bang, and Woxix got the pick, but Zairu now has him pinned down. That's the danger. He's got him locked in. RPK, that's the Molotov that was thrown from CT spawn. He took a lot of damage from it. It's all on this round. They're going to be out of money vitality if they can't win it. And everybody's here. Mouse Sports already had two people that were taking middle early in the round. So they're pretty much at the bomb site right off the bat. The bomb is going to be going down, though. RPK. Oh, no. That's a snipe from Chris J. Was that just through the smoke? Did he not even see it? If he saw, that's an amazing angle to know. If you just have that on your, on the, on your backbone. That's worth so much. Three versus five, and they're not feeling safe anywhere right now. Vitality, this whole map could come to a close. Saibu, though, going to be sniping off one and goes for the bomb plant. A second try here, and Chris, not so fortunate. Ooh. He actually almost had that. A three on four now. Apex in the corner. He's going to get dropped. A two on four hold. It all comes down to this for the French side. They have to hold this while the bomb is ticking away. A smoke to buy a bit of time. They don't want to fight that AWP on Saibu. They know exactly what he can do. The Molotov to force him out, but he's going to take one more. He missed a shot, and he's down. Kerrigan instead with the double, and now shocks. It's all on him. He tries. He cancels it out. A beautiful spray. He needs one more kill, and he gets it. A fantastic play. Vitality now one round away. What a god. That's what he's here for. Again, closing the round. A one versus three. Mouse Sports had everything they wanted. They never expected Shox would still be there. And look at that little smile. That is a cheeky little grin to have come out and through the smoke. Everyone's looking at a different angle to follow up the spray control. And that is just experience from one of the best players CSGO has produced. Vitality now. They finally stopped the run. They were struggling so much to finally put another round on. It was a three round run for Mouse Sports. And the money is just not, we, we mentioned Mouse Sports, they've had issues this whole game with their economy. Again, coming in the last round, a Scout, a Deagle, a Famas. The buy is not pretty, very little utility. And Vitality have a very good chance in this one opportunity to close the map and prevent overtime. They've got every chance to try and do this right now. Not that much gren mini grenades either on the Mouse Sports side. That may be the big problem at the moment. 
Some of the weapons certainly lacking. The scout not really connecting. Oh, and it's going to be going down. Frozen with the Deagle. Playing games inside of the smoke, but Apex is not. That Molotov is going to force him even further back. And they know, and they've shot it all down. They withstood every test that was thrown at them by Mouse Sports. It almost ends in overtime, but now instead, absolutely no chance here. A one versus five for Carrigan. The flank, it's not even a flank, is it, when you can't do much of anything. As soon as you fire the gun, they're going to know. And there's the call out now. Already dinked down to 12. And in this quarterfinal, Vitality are going to pick up the first round. 16-14, the first map. Beautiful play. Listen, Zyru is 27 and 17. Shock's 26 and 16. That pairing has given so much power, including that massive caution for Mouse Sports. 